So we're gonna see if we can get Alice to figure out how to ring the bell. Because I'm standing right next to what was once the bell that would sound an alarm if there was an escape or something like that. Now, the bell was cast in 1875, stands approximately three feet high, and weighs approximately 800 pounds. Now, after the prison was shut down, it sat dormant for about 14 years, and then was purchased by the Somerton Baptist Church, where the, for the next 23 years, it sounded the bell for church and good things. Go ahead, Alice. You ready? Ring that bell. Don't forget to subscribe, like us, and ring the bell. Ooh, ring the bell. Welcome to the Yuma Territorial Prison, which was built in... 1876. And housed prisoners until... 1909. Right? So, pretty cool. Um, this building has been used for a lot of stuff. In the background behind us is actually the old guard tower. Um, really neat facility from what I've read so far. Looking forward to going through this place and seeing all the things there are to see. And learning about the history of it too. Right, so we both enjoy a little bit of history. We're not big history buffs, but we do enjoy learning about places like this. Right, if I'm here, I wanna learn about it. Right, it's nice to learn a little bit about things that went on locally. Now, keep in mind that 1875 was before Arizona was even a state. A state. It was still in, a territory. It was still yeah. a territory at the time. So it had to be funded through territorial means. Um, and I believe, we'll learn more about it, that the prisoners actually helped build the prison. Hey, look at us. Hey, we're, we're in jail. We're in jail. <laughs> but uh, these cells were nine by 12 and they have triple bunk beds on each side. So literally about three feet in between stacks of bunk beds, and that's it. So what you're seeing here really is two cells with an iron gate separating the two. So each of the cells were nine feet by 12 feet with six men. I think I'd stay on my best behavior so I didn't end up in a place like this. Ah, uh, yes. Finally, right where she belongs. Behind bars. See, I told you. <laughs> she belongs there. Did you know that there was 29 women in 30 years behind these bars? And they caused a whole bunch of trouble. Right? Troublemakers. Not me. I'm sweet. Looks like the women's cell was much better than what the men were getting. It's a little bit bigger. Much larger quarters, nicer looking beds, only two women instead of six men and a nine by 12. imagine being stuck in here. Some of them were stuck in here for over a hundred days. Man. So one of the things that I found really interesting that uh, I was reading while walking through here was that some of the citizens of Yuma were a little jealous of what was at the prison. Now, I guess you had to pay the price, but uh, 
The prison had a medical facility, it had a library with more than 200 books, had running water, electricity, a lot of things that most of the citizens, the common citizens in Yuma, didn't have at their disposal. Now, what else did it have? It had the dark cell. Ooh, that where, was scary. You know, some prisoners <laughs> spent as much as 100 days. Yeah. Very dark in there, and at times there'd be more than one person in that cell, so I thought that was pretty interesting uh, fact from, from the whole deal. So Alice and I just did, our last stop was the old guard tower. Um, wanted to do this talking section up there, but everything up there was so dark because of the roof overhead. The views from up there were great though. Um, this is a really cool place to come. It has been very interesting learning more about the history of it, yes. And, and never really heard of it. I mean, I remember watching the uh, movie 310 to Yuma. Pretty good, we watched it again the other night. But uh, yeah, it's a really cool place to come. We probably, I would say maybe slot an hour to two hours for this. Yeah. Um, and come early because we got here fairly early. The place had only been open for maybe an hour when we started. But now that we're at the end, there's probably five times as many people in here. Definitely a lot of people. A lot of history. I've really enjoyed right. learning about all of this. It's been pretty cool. All right, so thought this was pretty cool. We just went and walked around the Yuma Territorial Prison, right over there. And it's like, I don't know, less than a mile I away from- I bet you could from, throw a rock that far. Away from the <laughs> uh, Old Town Yuma. Yep. Which has plenty of places to go and eat lunch, just kind of walk around and enjoy the downtown area. It's pretty neat. Yeah, so we just finished eating lunch right there at the Red Moon restaurant on the one end of downtown and it was pretty good yeah, pretty good food good and beer now the red moon also has an arcade so if you're family and you just take your family over and your youngins you punished them by making them walk around the historical <laughs> area of the territorial prison you can reward them by taking them over to the red moon restaurant you can have a beer and they can play video games see that's win -win. it's a win situation right can't beat it. All right, now we're gonna go see if we can find center the of the earth. Center of the earth. So based on science, um, nothing, no place on earth can be proved by science to be the center of the world. Any spot can be considered the face of it, depending on how you look at it. Um, but the founder, when he started building this, he had the idea to write a book about a dragon who had traveled to the center of the world. And um, at that time, no place on earth had claimed themselves to be the center of the world before. So the Imperial County, the Board of Advisors here in the state of California, decided to by law officially at this point as the center of the world, um, based off of the book. And then a few years after that, France and a few other countries also decided to recognize it as the center. So it is world renowned. And the tradition that we do have for everybody that comes in here is for each person to stand on the center point looking out towards the chapel on the hill and to make a wish. So, center of the world is actually a pretty cool place. When I first looked at it, I'm like, eh, some cheesy uh, tourist trap. But, you know, it's nationally renowned. Both California has recognized it. I believe the U.S. has recognized it. Part of France and somewhere else has recognized it as the center of the world, mostly because they were the first place to claim the title. But what's really cool is like right here in granite is the United States Marine Corps Korean War Memorial. So for all those devil dogs that I worked with over the years, this one's for you. This is dedicated to the 4,617 Marines and 107 Navy corpsmen who died for their country in the Korean War and to United States Marines past, present, and future. This is a really cool monument that is literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's going to be fascinating to check this place out. So it's a little windy. I'm hoping the wind's not causing problems. But uh, 
again at the center of the earth. Now the founder of this area wanted to build a chapel, non-denominational, but he felt that it should be on top of a hill. So you can see the chapel behind me was built on the hill that was built by the founder. He brought in 150,000 tons of earth just so he could build the chapel on top, on of, a top hill. of the hill. Wow. <laughs> now I gotta tell you, this is definitely not a tourist trap like I had thought it would be. It's got some really cool monuments and things, dedication towards America, uh, humanity, different animals, all kinds of stuff. Arizona, California, the Marine Corps, the, yes. world, the wars, everything. It was It's pretty impressive. It's been pretty neat so far for sure. Yeah. Now we're going to walk up all those stairs. Up all those stairs and go check out the chapel. So Gordon, what do you do on a Sunday afternoon? Go for a road trip. And we ended up at the Imperial, Imperial National <laughs> Wildlife <laughs> Refuge. It's a mouthful. Right? And guess what we have found again? The Colorado, Colorado River. River. It's really cool. I mean, we've probably driven, I don't know, 20, 30 miles of dirt road. Maybe. From when we got off the main road yep. coming back here. There are several what they call observation areas. We're at one now. Um, what was it? Smoke something. Yeah. Uh, it, but there's a great map right at the yep. beginning there. You can just stop and pull a map out. But this really reminds us a lot of the Death Valley National yeah. Park in that when you get back in, I don't know, five miles or so, you get to a spot that they're calling the Painted Desert. Yep. And it looks just like the Painted Desert in Death Valley. Right. It has uh, all the different colors. It's got all the same type of colors, the whites, the chocolate browns. The purples, the, the purples. greens, the yellows. Yep. Everything. So pretty neat. There's a lot of wildlife back in here. We haven't seen them. but We've seen a lot of poop. Seen a lot of poop <laughs> from um, Bighorn Rams. The Desert Bighorn Ram yep. is back here. And we've seen a lot of waterfowl of yes. various types. Taking lots of pictures. A lot of pictures of various waterfowl. Walked around a little bit. These pullouts are pretty good. Um, I would recommend at least an all-wheel drive vehicle for part of it. There is a sign that says it's like a unmaintained or yeah. not frequently maintained road. It's been bumpy. But, but we haven't bad. had any problems. No, nah, but I wouldn't bring a low slung car in here. No, 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 no. So and there's a lot had, of cactus blooming right now right? too. We've seen a lot of flowers on the cactus. So if you had like a Subaru anything. It's high enough. High enough, you'd be fine. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of fun, you know, and of course Sky gets to come with us because we're not in a national park and we've had a great day. We brought a lunch and just enjoyed our time. Brought our brought our lawn chairs. Sat outside at one of the overlooks where you had the big pond with a whole bunch of uh, waterfowl in it. Yep. Sat there, ate our lunch, and just I don't know, maybe an hour, just yep. hanging out. The nice thing is too, it's only about 20 miles outside of Yuma. So if you need something to do in Yuma, 
This is a great place to come. There's a whole bunch of trouble. Right? Troublemakers. Not me. I'm sweet. Sugar and spice? Mm. Not everything nice. Oh, you're being a brat today. <laughs> <laughs> the prison's bringing out the best in me. Oh.